So, we will continue our discussion in this module, instability and tearing of sheets and uh, we have completed the uh, theory part of this particular module and uh, we will now enter into uh, you know the uh, problem solving part. So, today we are going to solve 4 problems in this particular module, question number 1, question number 2, question number 3 and question number 4. These are the 4 problems relevant to this particular chapter module we are going to solve 4 problems. Okay. So, the first question is the following figure uh, this particular one shows a 100 mm length of a tensile test piece okay, total is 100 mm 90 plus 10 in which 10 mm that is this 10 mm has a width of 12.4 mm width is reduced and the remaining is 12.5 mm. Okay. So, we have a 100 mm gauge length let us say 90 and 10 it is split into two parts 90 mm 10 mm. The difference is in 90 mm you have the original width of 12.5 mm, but in 10 mm length that particular part you have 12.4 mm 0.1 mm is reduced actually. So, all dimensions are in mm you can say. But uh, the entire sheet has got uniform thickness of 1.2 mm. So, T naught is nothing but 1.2 mm. So, this material obeys a stress strain law. It is given here sigma is equal to 750 epsilon bar power 0 0.22 MPa. And uh, so, let us assume that uh, these two regions deform in uniaxial tension. Now, the question is determine the maximum load the final length of a 20 mm gauge length in the wider section. So, there will be one maximum load P max of the entire strip that we have to find out and then in this wider length that is your 12.5 mm this particular part you pick up a gauge length of 20 mm let us say at the center you have gauge length of 20 mm you are picking up. Okay. So, what is the final length of that particular gauge length? Okay and the maximum strain in this section. So, in this 20 mm gauge length what is the strain that is going to be encountered okay, uh, during this tensile test that is a question here. Okay. So, this is like equivalent to what we have studied you know like uh, we are defining a thickness heterogeneity right T B by T A. So, where uh, T B is your neck thickness or a groove thickness and T A is the outside region right. Similarly, here also instead of uh, a thickness heterogeneity you are having a reduction in width. A similar situation we have solved one problem in the uh, in the first lecture of this module if you remember it. Okay. So, now uh, when we are loading it in tensile test we have to find these three values P max uh, the strain in the uh, in this particular section 20 mm gauge length and what is the final length if that is the strain. So, directly we are going to write this particular one in a tensile strip. Okay. So, the load is given by P is equal to sigma 1 into A 1 we know that and uh, this already we know we already derived it sigma 1 is nothing but k epsilon power n and A 1 is nothing but A naught L naught by L 1. So, A 1 L 1 is equal to A naught L naught. So, A 1 is nothing but uh, so A naught L naught is equal to A 1 L 1. So, we want uh, A 1. So, it is nothing but uh, A naught L naught by L 1. Okay, that is what I have written here and k f on 1 power n then a naught would be your a naught would be your t naught w naught and l naught by l 1 is nothing but exponential minus epsilon. Okay. So, now what we are going to do is uh, when you are going to do tensile test of this we know that uh, this 12.4 mm width this particular region is actually the weaker region and hence in the narrow section I am going to call this as narrow section we can directly write the maximum load okay, will be given by epsilon is equal to n. So, I am going to write, I am going to modify this particular equation for maximum load in narrow cross section, in the narrow section. So, P max, this P becomes P max is equal to k epsilon 1 power n will remain as it is here and here, T naught W naught will remain same here and here, exponential minus epsilon would become exponential minus n. Okay. So, directly I am going to write this and I am going to just substitute all the values, k is known which is 750 mega Pascal. Okay. And, uh, so, here also you are going to have n. So, epsilon 1 will also become n. So, n power n will be there. Okay. So, this is n power n. Now, epsilon 1 will become n. Okay. So, either epsilon or epsilon 1 either way you can call. So, 750 will be there and 0 0.22 power 0 0.22 would come 
and then uh, t is 1.2 and w is 12.4 and exponential minus 0.22. So, if you calculate it, it will come about 6.42 kilo Newton. It will come about 6.418 kilo Newton. So, it is going to be 6.42 kilo Newton. Okay. So, this equation we are simply modifying it for a situation in maximum load f on is equal to n in narrow section. We are picking up narrow section, we are putting this condition. Okay, so, that uh, you can convert this epsilon 1 into n and this also as n let us say. So, that uh, you can write directly as a 750 okay, into 1.2 into 12.4 into your 0 0.22 power 0 0.2 exponential minus 0 0.22 would give you 6.42 kilo Newton. Now, let us come to wider section. Wider section we will have the same equation p is equal to k epsilon only thing is instead of epsilon 1 I am putting epsilon 1 a because we do not know that is what we need to find out. Okay. So, p equal to k epsilon 1 a power n. So, t naught w naught will remain here and here exponential minus epsilon 1 a. Okay. So, but whether it is this region wider region or a narrow region okay, there will be only one p max. So, what I can do is I can directly equate this to p max. So, at maximum load what I am going to do is I am going to directly equate this particular equation to 6.42 which I got from the previous narrow region. To this narrow region what I am getting here this I am going to equate it to the situation in this particular wide section because there is going to be only 1 p max for the entire strip. So, I am going to say that 750 will be remaining as t naught 1.2 into 12.4 okay, epsilon 1 a power 0 0.11 exponential minus epsilon 1 a would be equal to 6.42 and uh, what we can do is we can combine all the numerical values on one side and then keeping this uh, you know the fact the terms having epsilon 1a epsilon 1a power 0 0.22 exponential epsilon 1a I am going to keep it as it is and I am going to combine all the numerical values it is going to be equal to 0 0.571. So, what I am going to do is I am going to iteratively change this epsilon 1a value okay, and see for which value of epsilon 1a I am going to get 0 0.571. Okay, so, that I have just quickly took 4 different values and then uh, plotted it here epsilon 1a versus uh, this entire thing function of epsilon 1a this I need to get this. So, if I use 0 0.2 okay, here if I use 0 0.2 or 0 0.2 here so that I will get 0 0.5746 0 0.18 I get 0 0.5728 0 0.16 0 0.5694 and 0 0.17 if I put you will see that I am getting 0 0.571. Okay. So, from this table I can directly say we get epsilon 1a is equal to 0 0.17. So, that is my maximum strain in this section. Okay. In the wider section I am taking a maximum strain of 0 0.17 that is the next question that is the answer for next question. So, p max has been found out already 6.42 and then in the wider uh, you know section I am going to have epsilon 1a as 0.17 okay. and for this particular strain in that section what will be the value of 20 mm length or 20 mm length 20 mm gauge length in the wider section should become some value what is that value that you will get this particular strain. So, it is very simple. So, we know the original definition of epsilon 1a. So, I can directly write the new length would be equal to the original length 20 exponential epsilon 1a. So, this comes from the original definition of epsilon 1a. Uh, epsilon 1a is nothing but uh, ln of L by L naught original definition is not it. So, from that uh, I can write uh, this particular equation and uh, you will see that uh, for this particular value of epsilon 1a I am going to get L as 23.17 mm. So, that means, uh, so when you are uh, doing tensile test of this particular type of sample and uh, p max will happen at 6.42 kilo Newton and uh, during that particular situation you will see that uh, this the strain attained in the wider region would be equal to epsilon 1a that is along one direction would be equal to 0 0.17 and this when you have 0 0.17 strain the gauge length 20 mm would become 23.17 mm. So, at that particular stage you are going to have these three different values. Okay. So, it is just a simple problem only thing is like uh, we had two important points here. One is for narrow section, 
you are going to put this particular condition and get maximum load. That maximum load we are going to equate it to the same situation, similar situation in the wider region, that is in the A region, let us say. Okay. So, and then finally, we are going to get uh, the strain and the corresponding gauge length, new gauge length. Right. Okay. So, let us go to the next one. Next one is also a, a similar, uh, you know, uh, geometry. So, what is the question? Uh, the test piece geometry is used that it has got two parallel reduced lengths. One is 10 mm width, the other one is 9.8 mm width. Okay. So, that is how the sample dimensions are. So, width is 10 mm. Okay. In another section, you are going to have 9.8 mm width. So, in the wider section, a gauge length of 50 mm is marked. Okay. So, let us mark it. Okay. The strip is pulled to failure. Okay. So, you are deforming the material and it goes to failure. And the gauge length measured to determine the true strain. Okay. So, this particular gauge in 50 mm is used to measure the strain now. Okay. So, now the question is when you do that, suppose if you say that okay, you need to get uh, that particular strain in the range of 0 0.05 to 0 0.2, what will be the change in strain hardening index or exponent, strain hardening exponent that is a question. Okay, the strip is pulled to failure and the gauge length measured to determine the true strain epsilon a. Obtain a diagram relating true strain epsilon a in the range 0 0.05 to 0 0.2 to the strain hardening index. Okay. So, that means how n value is going to change depending on the strain that you get in the gauge region. So, that is the question, but the condition is the strip is not having uniform width, it is going to have slight a change in width, one is 10 mm width, the broader region, the other narrow region has got 9.8 mm width. So, since you are going to speak about n, then epsilon, okay, and then uh, you are going to have uh, some sort of area reduction between 10 mm width and 9.8 mm width, okay, directly we can relate all these, uh, you know, parameters by this particular equation which you already derived. N minus epsilon u is approximately equal to square root of minus n dA naught by A naught. With this, we already worked out one problem in this module. So, this equation can be used direct. So, now basically you need to get relationship between n and epsilon u and that epsilon u you vary between 0 0.05 to 0 0.02. We need to see how n is going to change. That is all. Okay? But for that you need to know this imperfection, severity of imperfection. So, which is nothing but dA naught by A naught. So, you can see that it is 10 mm width, 9.8 mm width. So, the difference is you can take thickness, thickness is not given, maybe you can take thickness of 1 mm, let us say. So, if that is the case, then it will dA naught would be minus 0 0.2 divided by 10, which is nothing but minus 0 0.02. And uh, as per this equation, n minus epsilon u is equal to square root of minus n dA naught by A naught, that will be equal to 0 0.02. So, minus minus will become plus 0 0.02 into n. So, n minus epsilon u whole square would be equal to 0 0.02 n. Okay. So, now you can expand this n square plus epsilon u square minus 2 n, epsilon u would be equal to 0 0.02 n. So, and you will see that this will be a uh, in the form of a quadratic equation. So, you can see that n square minus 2 n epsilon u plus epsilon u square is equal to 0 0.02 n. This is nothing but n square minus 2 epsilon u plus 0 0.02 n plus epsilon u square is equal to 0. So, a x square plus b x plus c is equal to 0. It is of that form. So, you can find root of this equation as uh, so this way. So, n is equal to okay, you can say minus b. So, 2 into epsilon u plus 0 0.02 plus or minus square root of b square 2 epsilon u plus 0 0.02 the whole square minus uh, 4 into 1 into epsilon u square but divided by 2. Okay. So, you can simplify this to get in a such a simpler format where n is going to vary with respect to epsilon u in this way. Okay. And uh, it is said that uh, if you change epsilon a or in this case epsilon u, okay, because you are saying that it is pulled into fracture, no. So, there is nothing wrong in uh, you know keeping this epsilon a as epsilon u in this equation. Both are going to be same. So, now if you change epsilon a, let us say four different values you take between 0 0.05 and 0 0.05, let us say 0 0.1, 0 0.15 and 0 0.2. 
if you substitute here what is the value of n so you may get a two you know you may get a range because there is a plus minus okay so you may get a range which is what i plotted here so if you change epsilon here 0 0.05 you may get one limit for uh, you know 0 0.0 next limit for 0 0.1 then 0 0.05 you get another limit and 0 0.2 you get uh, another limit so obtain a diagram so this is the diagram we are going to get uh, which basically tells you how n changes with respect to this epsilon a okay so depending on epsilon a n is not going to be a constant n is going to vary in this fashion okay so this is your next problem so your uh, third problem is also relevant to your imperfection uh, related okay so this problem is also very important for us to understand what we studied before so this diagram you can refer this diagram is known to us okay this was used before for some theoretical explanation so you have a sheet which is pulled in both the directions let us say sigma 1 and 2 principal stresses in one direction two direction and let us consider a, a region and b region a region is actually uh, it's a uniform region b region is like a, a groove you can say or a neck region so where thickness is going to be tb and outside it's going to be t so this is where we defined f is equal to tb by ta if you, ref, if you remember this right so this is the situation we have so what is it said in the question an element of material has an imperfection characterized by f0 is equal to 0 0.995 it's same as that of f but we know that the f is not going to remain same so we say f0 as shown in this figure here this particular figure okay so that particular material has got this imperfection defined by 0 0.995 so small imperfection value okay so it is deformed in equibiaxial tension that is given here okay so sigma 1a equal to sigma 2a so sigma 1a will be equal to sigma 2a means that means uh, with respect to a location with respect to a region okay with respect to a region your alpha is no for biaxial tension alpha is nothing but one you can keep so and the entire material is going to follow this particular stress strain law sigma bar is equal to 600 into 0 0.004 plus epsilon bar power 0 0.2 and you know the fact that this is nothing but your pre-strain value such a small value 0 0.004 MPA okay so pre-strain value so now what is the question determine the principal stresses principal stresses means you have sigma 1 and sigma 2 and the stress ratio that is nothing but alpha in the groove region when the uniform region starts to deform the uniform region just starts to deform so this a region is just going to deform start to deform at that particular situation you need to get principal stresses and stress ratio in the groove that is b so i am going to say epsilon b 1b and 2b these three values you have to evaluate so which means that one should understand the fact that the sigma 1a 2a alpha a are not going to be same as that of this that is why this question is actually asked right so so first of all we need to evaluate these three values in the b region that is in the groove region this b is nothing but your groove region because your thickness is less a is a uniform region so now when the uniform region starts to deform so that is a key point okay we can say that for both the elements if this is the situation the material has zero plastic strain okay it's just going to deform okay so if the plastic strain value is given you can directly use it if it is not given then we can simply say material as zero plastic strain because we don't have any other reference of what is the strain when the uniform region starts to deform okay it may have small value but then we don't have it in the question so we can simply say that this epsilon bar which is nothing but a plastic strain let us say this is going to be zero so that reflective stress sigma bar becomes 600 into 0 0.004 power 0 0.2 which is about 198.9 megapascal okay so this sigma bar has been obtained now okay so uh, when the uniform region starts to deform suppose if uh, plastic strain epsilon bar is some value is given then we have to use that value to get a sigma bar so which is not going to be this it could be slightly uh, some other value okay so now given the situation we are saying that this fellow is going to be equal to zero okay so now let us come to a region which is a, a easy region for us to evaluate certain things so in the a region now because i know sigma bar 
because I know sigma bar, I have to relate this sigma bar to one of the principal stresses. So, directly we, we are going to use some yield function and uh, well known yield function right now for us is nothing but your one minus yield function. So, as per one minus yield function, we can directly write sigma bar divided by square root of 1 minus alpha plus alpha square equal to sigma 1, we say since it is a A region, I am writing sigma 1A. So, suppose if you put alpha is equal to 1, because we say that it is uh, the A region or in the uniform region, we say that uh, it is balanced or equi, equi biaxial tension. So, alpha is equal to let us say 1. Okay. So, this also is 1. So, 1 minus 1 uh, plus 1 square root goes off. So, sigma 1, sigma bar will be equal to sigma 1a. Sigma bar is equal to nothing but sigma 1a. So, what does it mean? That means we can directly write sigma 1a is nothing but 198.9 mega Pascal. 198.9 mega Pascal. So, we need to find sigma 1b and sigma 2b. So, now what we have done is we have found out sigma 1a. Sigma 1a has been found out. Okay. Then, uh, if you know sigma 1a, sigma 2a can be found out, but that may not be useful for us because we know alpha. Okay. So, it may not be useful for us, it will be same, So, but it will not be useful for us. So, directly we are going to B region. So, in B region, okay, if you want to go to B region, then we have to use uh, some already known value that is sigma 1a. Okay. So, if you want to find uh, sigma 1b, huh, my aim is to find sigma 1b. So, sigma 1b has to be found out with a known value, let us say sigma 1a, then the best relationship that I can find out is nothing but my f value, my f value, is not it? So, we have already derived that f is equal to Tb by Ta, from here we have derived the stress ratio also, okay, uh, in connection with f, okay, and that is what is given here. So, sigma 1b if you want, that will be obtained by sigma 1a divided by f0, this we already derived. Sigma 1b, if you want, you can have sigma 1a divided by f0. Sigma 1a is 198.9 and f0 is nothing but its initial f0 is 0 0.995 and that will give you uh, sigma 1b is about 199.9 mega Pascal. Right. So, it is okay like for example, sigma 1b is 199.9 would be larger than sigma 1a. That is what is given to us. So, now what I am going to do is, I am going to now sigma 1b is found out. So, my this value is now ready. Okay. So, now this value is ready. So, now I need to find out let us say sigma 2b or alpha b. Okay. If I know alpha b, I can find sigma 2b or if I know sigma 2b, I can find alpha b. But now what I am going to do is to find out alpha now. So, now the same thing. So, if I know sigma 1b, major principal stress is known. If I want to know alpha, the simple relationship what I have is 1 minus yield function. So, I can directly write for region B also sigma bar divided by square root of 1 minus alpha plus alpha square is equal to sigma 1B, which is nothing but the sigma bar is nothing but already known 198.9 divided by square root of 1 minus alpha plus alpha square, which would be equal to sigma 1B, which is 199.9. If you simplify this, you will get alpha as 0 0.99, which is not actually 1. You will see that the uh, uh, with respect to A region, sigma 1a would be equal to sigma 2a, which is given, but actually if you calculate alpha in the groove region, it is slightly less than 1. It is not uh, equibiaxial tension. It is biaxial tension, but uh, alpha is not equal to 1. There is a change. So, one has to be a little bit careful and understand this particular thing. And uh, that is all. So, if alpha is known to me, so now I can find uh, sigma 2b because sigma 2b is nothing but alpha into sigma 1b, which is 9.0.99 into 199.9, which will give me 197.9 mega Pascal. Okay. So, I am going to use two important relationship. One is my 1 minus yield function, sigma bar divided by square root of 1 minus alpha plus alpha square equal to sigma 1, and then this particular relation, sigma 1b equal to sigma 1a by f0. Okay. These two relationship, this one and this one, these two expressions are actually used to evaluate the entire problem. So, region A, region B okay, are divided and we can apply these equations appropriately to get a required answer. But again, I am telling if uniform region starts to deform, if some strain, effective strain is given, we have to use that instead of zero plastic strain. So, now here we do not have choice uh, to assume it to be zero, even at the start of the deformation. Okay, so, this is the third problem. So, now let us go to the fourth one which is a, which is a general one. Okay. So, now assuming that tensile necking begins at maximum load. Okay. So, that we already put this condition, is not it? 
So we already said that uh, your DF is equal to DF or DP is equal to be equal to zero, right? Begins at maximum load. Find the actual true strain epsilon at necking for the following material loss after deriving a general equation. Okay. So basically, you need to get the actual true strain at necking. So basically, you can say epsilon u you want to get. Okay, at necking. But only difference is there are three different stress strain loss that is given and some specific values are given to get some actual values for this epsilon u. Okay, one is sigma is equal to k into epsilon naught plus epsilon power n. This equation we already know where f naught is your pre strain. That value is given 0 0.05 and n is also given 0 0.25 and k is given as 500 mega Pascal. There is next equation sigma is equal to sigma naught plus k epsilon. This is a very uh, a linear equation between true stress and true strain and uh, sigma naught is nothing but 250 MPa and k is about uh, uh, 350 MPa they have. And another one is a trigonometrical function. Okay, sigma bar is equal to k sin b into epsilon and k is given as 500 MPa and uh, your b is uh, let us say 2 pi. So, since it is tensile necking begins as maximum load, you want to get actual true strain. We are going to put the same condition which we derived before that is d sigma by d epsilon would be equal to sigma or 1 by sigma d sigma by d epsilon is equal to 1 we said, is not it? The same equation can be used here. So, sigmas are given. So, you have to differentiate and equate it to the same equation, get a general form of the equation, apply these values, you will get epsilon u. That would be the uh, approach. So, sigma is equal to k into epsilon plus epsilon naught power n. So, d sigma by d epsilon would be n k epsilon naught plus epsilon power n minus 1, which is nothing but, which is nothing but sigma. d sigma by d epsilon is equal to sigma. So, this sigma is nothing but k epsilon plus epsilon naught power n. So, you can equate like this. From this, you will get n is equal to epsilon plus epsilon u and epsilon u would be equal to n minus epsilon naught. n is already given as 0 0.25, epsilon naught is 0 0.05. So, epsilon u would be 0.2. Okay. So, this is a straight line fit sigma is equal to sigma naught plus k epsilon. So, which is nothing but y is equal to m x plus c. Slope of this curve would be nothing but slope and slope of will be nothing but m only. So, you will get t k. Uh, d sigma by d epsilon is nothing but k. This d sigma by d epsilon is nothing but sigma which is nothing but sigma naught plus k epsilon is the original equation. So, from this you can get epsilon u as 350 minus 250 by 350 which is 0 0.29. If sigma is equal to k sin b epsilon, then d sigma by d epsilon is nothing but k cos b epsilon, b epsilon would be b, which is nothing but k sin b epsilon is nothing but sigma. So, from this you can get epsilon as 1 by b tan inverse of b. So, u epsilon u is nothing but you can substitute 2 pi here and you may get some value. Please check it. This would be your epsilon u. So, 3 values of epsilon u all are different. These are going to be different. These are not going to be same. Okay. So, the condition remains same that is tensile instability condition at maximum load is being applied, but if you change the material loss which the material is going to follow, okay, then accordingly your epsilon u prediction is also going to change. It is not a small change, it is a going to be a good change. This could be 0 0.2, this is 0 0.29, this could be maybe, uh, maybe 0 0.22, maybe 0 0.23 will come. So, all these uh, values is going to tell you finally that uh, depending on the material law, you know, the instability prediction is going to be different. Okay. So, we have seen four problems in this. Uh, so, four problems. Okay. So, here we have used uh, uh, the maximum load condition at the narrow section and got P max and uh, use that P max to get to apply the same thing to the, the wider uh, cross section, okay, wider section and in this, okay, uh, from this you can get uh, your uh, strain at that particular maximum load. If that is the case, what is the length in a small part of that wider region is what we found out. Next one is similar situation, you have a narrow region and wider region. If it is pulled up to failure, now they are asking us how to find out uh, uh, the variation in n with respect to the strain values within a small range of strain. So, in that way we looked into the problem, the tone of the problem is basically to relate n, epsilon u and the imperfection. So, we started in this way, we started in this way. Third one is straight away that our balanced biaxial tension situation and then uh, uh, the uh, situation in the 
uh, uniform region that is in the A region is given to us. Now we wanted to find principal stresses and alpha in the B region. So here also we have used two important expressions. One is uh, the von Mises seal function expression and the, uh, the heterogeneity factor F. But not related to thickness, we have already converted that into stress ratio that is what uh, uh, we have used here in the second equation and then we have found out uh, all the values. The fourth one is a very general one, okay. Suppose if the material fails, uh, you know, at the instability, okay, uh, the, at the maximum load, then you want to find uniform, uh, you know, true strain, okay. So, then in that case, how material law is going to change the value? So, that is what is given here. So, with this we stop. The next module we are going to start a new section. Thank you.